Today I have with me a very interesting banker, a person who doesn't carry a mobile phone, leaves office at 5.30 sharp every evening, grows strawberries and Italian lemon in his garden, plays with his dogs, cooks for his guests and loves his wine. And yet his bank is one of the most efficient and possibly most expensive banks in Asia. Mr. Aditya Puri of HDFC Bank. Welcome Mr. Puri. Thank you. You are a very interesting personality, but your bank is so boring, boringly beautiful. No? Quarter after quarter, with clinical precision, you will have between 27 and 32 uh, percent growth in net profit and net interest income and loan growth. Your NIM will continue to be very high, NPA very low. Uh, I mean, how do you manage this? You can't manage it. It has to be basic and intrinsic to your model. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, we've said it a long time, and Tamil, you used to ask me once upon a time that are you conservative? And I said, banking is a conservative business. And boring. And boring, very boring. So I think we take pride in being boring in that we are clearly defined in the market we operate, in the risk reward parameters that we will take, the type of service that we will provide, and the business we are in. So based on that, uh, you can expect us to be boring because we define what is the margin, which is a function of the products, and what is the delinquency, which is again the type of credit risk that you take. And we are not doing banking that was considered to be extremely intelligent and resulted in a disaster. We don't do that banking, so I'm afraid you will have to live with a boring bank. So intelligent banks uh, lead to disaster? Super intelligent banks, which result in products that only they understand. Uh, history says they led to a problem. In India too, you have seen that? In India, uh, I would reserve my comments. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Before we dissect uh, you know, the PNL of your bank, uh, let me ask you a technical question. Technically, you are a foreign company because your ownership is, foreign ownership is more than 76%. Now, does it any way have any impact on your day-to-day -day operations? In my view, we are not even technically a foreign company. But the government norms say that. No, I am not going to comment on the government norms. I am giving you my view. Okay. In my view, even technically, we are not a foreign company because foreign voting rights in our company is less than 50%. Mm -hmm. So the ADR that we have issued do not carry voting rights. Okay. So I am very clear that the majority Ownership as well as control of this bank is Indian. We are as Indian as they come and foreign capital is welcome if they want to help our growth and help the country. What is the problem if they don't have majority ownership? But does not affect uh, uh, your uh, downstream investments? No, it uh, in, in the sense that you need approval. Okay. I presume that everything will be streamlined and we'll be getting quick approvals in the future. Okay. You said you believe in boring banking, but uh, you're actually very sharp and strategically very innovative. Post Lehman, we find that you quickly moved into the retail banking with lots and lots of aggression in the past two years, uh, in 2010 and 2011. And now your retail and corporate book is equally balanced, 50-50. So is it a business shift, strategic shift in your business? We have to participate in the GDP of the country. India, in our view, we said is a consumption story. Because if you see our composition of our GDP, 57% is consumption. And so you cannot, be, if you're a bank, which is a financial intermediary, you cannot be outside that portion of GDP, which clearly said that we needed to be in retail banking. You also have government as a major component, so we also moved into government business. You will also have investments, but the investments, because we don't have an appropriate debt market, the risk reward sometimes doesn't balance out. So we said we want to be in AAA banking, we want to be middle, we want to be in the small, we want to be in consumer and we also felt that since 50% of the population resides in semi-urban and rural areas, 
we and affluence will by definition move to this we should have an appropriate distribution platform and product offering available to that part of the country tell me at this point your corporate book and retail book is 50 50 yes right what kind of numbers you have in mind like we, we, do you see retail uh, loan uh, portfolio is rising even beyond 50 going to 60 and corporate book shrinking no, I don't think so. I don't think so. You see, what happens is we don't put targets for either corporate or retail, mm -hmm. which are dependent upon what percentage of our book it will be. It will depend upon the prospects for the business. As of today, if, since we are largely in the working capital cycle for corporates, with inflation, demand for working capital goes up. Yeah. So we see a healthy growth in our corporate portfolio. With inflation, salaries also go up. So we also see a healthy demand in our retail portfolio. With inflation, investment to some extent suffers. Okay. Fortunately, we are not very big in that area. Hmm. So this, in the current macroeconomic scenario, this kind of balance 50-50 yes. can continue for the time being. I should think so, yes. Right? Now, within the retail book, your primary focus is on mortgage, on auto loans, and also credit card. I think you are now in India the largest credit card user. 5 million numbers, Yes. right? In terms of assets, in terms of money, I think it's about uh, now about between 5 and 7% of your overall book. Yes. So this is unsecured, Yeah. right? And you have also personal loans that are unsecured. Yes. So aren't you running a risk? You spoke about uh, risk reward. Of course we are running a risk, but you have to be clear on what kind of risk you're running mm -hmm. and whether your risk that you're running is appropriately priced mm -hmm. so that at the end of the day, after operating costs and the defaults, expected defaults you'll take, you get the appropriate return on the product. So we have been in this business, this is not new, in personal loans we've been in it for over 10 years and we have a fantastic book which is not showing any strains. Where we have clearly defined our target market, our credit standards are reasonably clear, we have good delivery mechanisms, we have a good product and we don't see any strain in that market. And you have to understand that if you have to be a major player in retail, it cannot be only on secured products. Are you making money in your retail book? We are making, definitely making money. We don't do anything where we don't make money. What about uh, <laughs> your yeah. exposure to credit card? Are you, are you making money? We are making money, but it's an interesting point you bring up, Tamal. There is a wrong impression in the world at large that credit cards is extremely profitable. Credit cards, most banks in India in credit cards at this point of time are either making marginal losses or maybe break even. We are one of the few that is making money. So this impression that the banks are charging usury rates, this is, they're making money hand over fist. No, this is a high cost business. It is also a convenience business. And I do appreciate that there must be consumer protection. But let's not have it to such an extent that we forget the balance because then people will just issue cards to the more affluent. So the is collection is a problem, that's what you see? Uh, there's part collection, part whether fees, costs, etc. I think it must be balanced. It's a good convenience. What will be your NPA in the credit card portfolio? Oh, it, uh, the market NPAs are upwards of 15%. We are just about in double digits.